ilioinguinal approach to the pelvis. Very important access to the anteriorly fractured pelvis. The ilioinguinal approach allows exposure of the inner surface of the pelvis from the sacroiliac joint to the pubic symphysis figure. It allows visualization of the anterior and medial surfaces of the acetabulum and is, therefore, suitable for exposure of anterior column fractures of the acetabulum. It also allows the insertion of screws into the posterior column. The dissection involves isolating and mobilizing the femoral vessels and nerve, as well as the spermatic cord in the male and the round ligaments in the female. Because orthopedic surgeons usually do not operate in this area, operating in conjunction with a general surgeon may be advisable. Alternatively, cadaveric dissection should be performed before embarking on this exposure. Landmarks and incision. Landmarks. Palpate the anterior superior iliac spine by bringing your fingers up from below. Pubic tubercles. With your fingers anchored on the trochanter, move your thumbs medially along the inguinal creases and obliquely downward until you can feel the pubic tubercle. Incision. Make a curved anterior incision beginning 5 cm above the anterior superior iliac spine. Extend the incision medially, passing 1 cm above the pubic tubercle to end in the midline. Make a curved anterior incision beginning 5 cm above the anterior superior iliac spine. Extend the incision medially, passing just above the pubic tubercle to end in the midline. Superficial surgical dissection. Internervous plane. There is no true internervous plane. The dissection consists of lifting off muscular, nervous, and vascular structures from the inner wall of the pelvis. Superficial surgical dissection. Dissect down through the subcutaneous fat to expose the aponeuroses of the external oblique muscle, figure. Dissect through subcutaneous fat in the line of the skin incision to expose the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle. The lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh will appear in the lateral edge of the dissection. In most cases, the nerve will need to be divided. Divide the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle in the line of its fibers from the superficial inguinal ring to the anterior superior iliac spine, figure. Divide the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle from the superficial inguinal ring to the anterior superior iliac spine. This will expose the spermatic cord in the male and the round ligament in the female. Carefully isolate these structures in a sling, figure. Continue the dissection medially. Dividing the anterior part of the rectus sheath to expose the underlying rectus abdominis muscle. Strip the iliacus muscle from the inside of the wing of the ilium. Initially, you will need to use sharp dissection, but once inside the pelvis, use blunt dissection. Mobilize the spermatic cord or round ligament in a sling. The posterior wall of the inguinal canal is now exposed. Deep surgical dissection. Divide the rectus abdominal muscle transversely 1 cm proximal to its insertion into the symphysis pubis. Using blunt dissection, develop a plane between the back of the symphysis pubis and the bladder. This space, the cave of rectus, is easily developed with a finger. Cut through those fibers of the internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscles that form the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. Figure. Divide the rectus abdominal muscle 1 cm proximal to its insertion into the symphysis pubis. Divide the muscles forming the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. Deep surgical dissection. Take care when approaching the deep inguinal ring. The inferior upper gastric artery and vein cross the posterior wall of the canal at the medial edge of the deep inguinal ring and must be ligated at that point. Inadvertent division of these structures results in profuse hemorrhage that is difficult to control. Now divide those fibers of the transversus abdominis and internal oblique muscles that arise from the lateral half of the inguinal ligament, figure. Ligate and divide the inferior epigastric vessels. Complete the division of the muscular structures of the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. Deep surgical dissection. The peritoneum covered with extra peritoneal fat is now exposed. Using a swab, push the peritoneum upward to reveal the femoral vessels, the femoral nerve, and the tendon of iliopsoas, figure. Using a swab, push the peritoneum upwards to reveal the femoral vessels. Mobilize the iliacus muscle from the inner aspect of the ilium. Isolate the femoral vessels together in the femoral sheath and protect them with a sling. 
pass a second sling around the tendon of iliopsoas with the femoral nerve lying on top of it, figure. Continue stripping off the iliacus from the inner wall of the ilium to reveal the sacroiliac joint. Pass the sling around the femoral sheath. Retract these structures either medially or laterally to gain access to the underlying medial surface of the acetabulum and superior pubic ramus, figure. Retract the iliopsoas and the femoral sheath either medially or laterally to reveal the medial surface of the acetabulum, the superior pubic ramus, and the inner surface of the ilium round to the sacroiliac joint. Three windows are created. The lateral window, lateral to the iliopsoas gives access to the inner surface of the ilium. The middle window, medial to the iliopsoas but lateral to the femoral artery and vein gives access to the quadrilateral plate. The medial window, medial to the femoral artery and vein gives access to the superior pubic ramus and symphysis. For best visualization of the medial window, the surgeon should move to stand on the opposite side of the patient. Tilting the operating table also improves the visualization of the medial window. Dangers. Nerves. The femoral nerve runs beneath the inguinal canal lying on the iliopsoas muscle. Take care to avoid vigorous retraction, as stretching the nerve will result in paralysis of the quadriceps muscle. The lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh will certainly have to be divided around the anterior superior iliac spine at this stage of dissection. If it is possible to retract it without compromising the exposure, do so. Dividing the nerve will leave a patch of numbness on the outer side of the thigh. Dangers. The femoral vessels as they pass beneath the inguinal ligament are surrounded by a funnel-shaped fascial covering called the femoral sheath. It is this sheath that should be mobilized and held between slings rather than dissecting out the artery and vein separately. Care should be taken on the retraction of these structures to minimize the risk of deep vein thrombosis. The femoral sheath contains the femoral artery and vein, and medial to the vein is a space known as the femoral canal. The femoral canal contains efferent lymph vessels, but also provides a dead space into which the femoral vein can expand. This space can also, however, contain a femoral hernia, and this should be remembered when mobilizing the structure. The inferior epigastric artery crosses the operative field passing medial to the deep inguinal ring. It will need to be ligated to allow access to the deeper structures. The inferior epigastric vein may be damaged during dissection at the medial end of the approach. It is usually avulsed from the side of the femoral vein. This causes a profuse hemorrhage and requires the sewing of the resultant vascular defect in the side of the vein. Dangers. Spermatic cord contains the vas deferens and testicular artery. Although it is easily mobilized, it must be treated gently during the approach and the closure to avoid ischemic damage to the testicle. The bladder is easily mobilized off the back of the symphysis pubis. Be aware that fractures of the lower half of the anterior column, especially displaced fracture of the superior pubic rami, may have caused bladder damage and adhesions. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe my non-profit YouTube channel.